It's really hard to be truly happy when you're not being yourself. And most of us have no clue who we are. We all have situations that don't look like they're going to work out. We don't see how we can get well, how we can accomplish a dream, how our family will be restored. All the circumstances say it's not going to happen. How much of life do you feel like you control or how much does life control you? Do you tend to control more of what's going on or events controlling you? If you focus on what you can't control, if you focus on the past, if you focus on what's missing from your life constantly, that pattern of focus will make you frustrated, overwhelmed, depressed. It won't even matter if you're you know, taking antidepressants. If you keep focusing on what you can't control, what's missing from your life, you're gonna feel depressed still. You can take as many antidepressants as you want. Focus equals power. Complaining, crying, whining, griping, a Bible word called murmuring. See, that'll ace your future. Spend five minutes complaining and you have wasted five. And you may have begun what's known as economic cancer of the bone. Surely they will soon haul you off into a financial desert and there let you choke on the dust of your own regret. And not only is it important for you to know it's possible for you to choose your future, but it's necessary that you work on yourself, that you develop yourself. It's necessary that you get the energy drainers out of your life, people who don't want anything, people who are not striving, people who are not challenging themselves, people who aren't growing, people who have stopped dreaming. It's necessary that you align yourself with people and attract people into your business who are hungry, people who are unstoppable and unreasonable, people who are refusing to leave life just as it is and who want more. My mother used to say, birds of a feather flock together. If you run around with losers, you will end up a loser. It's necessary that you get the losers out of your life if you want to live your dream. The challenge of life, I have found, is to build a resume that doesn't simply tell a story about what you want to be, but it's a story about who you want to be. It's a resume that doesn't just tell a story about what you want to accomplish, but why. A story that's not just a collection of titles and, and positions, but a story that's really about your purpose. Because when you inevitably stumble and find yourself stuck in a hole, that is the story that will get you out. What is your true calling? What is your dharma? What is your purpose? You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. Because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path. And that will make all the difference. Just stand. You keep standing. You keep standing, no matter how rough the sea, you keep standing. And I'm not talking about just water. You keep standing. No matter what, you don't give up. It doesn't matter to me any longer how long I live. What matters to me most is how I live. To ask y'all one question, a question that I was asked all my life by a third grade dropout, how you living? How you living? Every day ask yourself that question, how you living? Here's, here's what a cook in the dining center would suggest you to live this way. That you would not judge. That you would show up early. That you'd be kind. That you'd make sure that that servant's towel is huge and used. That if you're going to do something, you do it the right way. That, that, that cook would tell you this, that it's never wrong to do the right thing. That how you do anything is how you do everything. And in that way, you will grow your influence to make an impact. In that way, you will honor all those who have gone before you, who have invested in you. Look in those unlikeliest places for wisdom. Enhance your life every day by seeking that wisdom 
and asking yourself every night, how am I living? One person can change the world by giving people hope. So if you want to change the world, start each day with a task completed. Find someone to help you through life. Respect everyone. Know that life is not fair and that you will fail often. But if you take some risks, step up when the times are the toughest, face down the bullies, lift up the downtrodden, and never ever give up. If you do these things, the next generation and the generations that follow will live in a world far better than the one we have today. And what started here will indeed have changed the world for the better. Let's look at this idea of specificity for a minute. Like a winter home in Hawaii, very nice. But if I say, I will own a two bedroom beachfront villa on the west coast of Maui, Hawaii by June 1st, 2003, does that sound a little more clear? Yeah, and until you get specific like that, the creative part of your brain won't jump in and decide how to help you get there. And that's why a lot of people never get their dreams because they don't make them specific enough. You got to get real nitty gritty, break it down. How much by when? I want a better relationship with my husband. Well, what does that mean? But if I say I want to spend an hour a week sitting opposite my husband talking about real things that matter, no TV on, eye to eye communication, now that we can measure. Did you do it for an hour? Want to have more fun. What does that mean? But what if I say I'm going to listen to comedy albums twice a week for a minimum of an hour? You're probably going to have more fun. So make it specific. Make it, make it real. Some people say, you know, I want our business to increase. Well, how much? By when? I want the reading scores to go up in a school. How much? By when? Until you have that, you're not going to make progress. And so many people's dreams never get completed because they're not clear about the specific number of how much by when. I told you earlier in the program, we said we're going to sell a million and a half books in a year and a half. And that directed our behavior. Recently, we just said we're going to sell a million books in one day. And we had 101 bookstores involved in a book signing. We're going to try to be in the Guinness Book of World Record for the largest book signing ever done. Now, I don't think we sold a million books. Maybe we sold a couple hundred thousand. But by holding that question and trying to figure out how to do it, it moved us toward that goal. Now, maybe it'll take us two years to figure out how to sell a million books in one day. But it gets the thinking to expand out into that arena. Is this making sense? Okay, so you want to have those goals. Now, the other thing you want to do is break your goals down. Many of you have big goals, end hunger in the world. That's a pretty big goal. You know, have world peace, achieve a certain level of spiritual oneness with God or life. Big goals. When you first look at it, it's kind of overwhelming. But what if we were to break that down into little steps? It says, okay, I want to go to college and get a PhD. Gosh, I'm only a high school student. But the next step would be, Finish the math class, get an A in this. Write for a brochure from a college, get a catalog. Pick one or five colleges that I want to apply to. You know, just keep breaking it down to little steps and then figure out how to get all those steps done and put a date by each step. And then start doing the plan. Someone said if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Some, one of my friends said success by the yard is hard, by the inch it's a cinch. So we just break it down into small pieces. I had, uh, I was reading the Guinness Book of World Records because we were thinking about being in there, and this guy set a goal to eat an entire bicycle, tires and all. Now, how do you do that, right? Well, it took him 17 days, but what he did is he kept cutting the bicycle up and then melting it down into little swallowable pieces, and he ate them. I don't know how much stayed in, but he ate them, right? <laughs> but the point being, anything can be done if you break it down small enough. Make sense? So don't let the bigness of a goal overwhelm you. I don't know if you'd agree with me on this, but in many ways, one of the key factors to legendary success isn't your natural ability. It's not whether you have the right product. It's not whether you're in the right field. It's not whether you've had a blessed background. It's not whether you have the right IQ. I want you to really think about and deconstruct and play with maybe later tonight in your journal. I want you to deconstruct this idea of confidence. And it seems like a very simple word, but just think about it in your own life. When you have confidence, or we could even call it fire, when you have that fire within you, that confidence, that interior bravery, you, you almost 
have this power to do whatever it takes to get your brave vision done. You see, in this world, it's not about, you know, in many ways, your strategy in your business or your ability in your life. It's about this thing called confidence. And we have all had these times in our lives when we are full of confidence. And what other people see as a problem, we simply do see as an opportunity. Other pe people see it as a stumbling block or a wall, and we see it as a stepping stone or this solution. And so confidence is something that you really want to wire in. Confidence is something you really want to develop. Confidence is a practice. Confidence is a muscle. And like any muscle, the more you focus on it and practice it and train it, the stronger your confidence is going to grow. And I just have to say it again. When you are at a place in your life, when there is an ongoing steady st stream of confidence moving through your mindset, moving through your heart set, you do the heroic in your business and you achieve the remarkable in your life. LeBron shows up, this dude comes in 15 minutes before practice and LeBron gives him that look like, hey dude, what, what's going on here? He's like, what do you mean I'm 15 minutes early? He's like, should have been here an hour ago. And, and, and when he says that to this dude, the guy knows LeBron's been there for two hours. So all I, all I ask you to do, like here's a guy, probably the best that's ever walked out on a basketball court, short of Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> but both of them had one thing in common, they worked, okay? It wasn't about their, just their talent, it was about their work ethic. People knew them for their work ethic. So just ask yourself this week, do people know you for your work ethic? Or people, are people like, man, you work hard? Are people actually commenting about you showing up early and staying late? Because if they're not, then you're just, you're just blending in with everybody else's work ethic. At the end of the day, talent will not win the game. It is work ethic that will win the game. So when I saw this, I'm like, here's a guy, top of his game, he's got all the money you could possibly, he could never spend all his money. Impossible, he'll be a billionaire, okay? And he's showing up two hours early to make sure he plays the game, to make sure he's in physical condition, to make sure that he can stay in the game long past it. He doesn't even need it. He's got all his rings. I got to tell you, I, got, I, I was so inspired by it because I got a bunch of partners. I got guys that I do business with. I got one of them in particular that I'm having some problems with. He told me, man, if I had your money, dude, I would retire. He said it to me over and over, and I hadn't been listening to it enough to, to understand he wants to go lay down. Okay, you cannot run. What's that thing called you did? Iron you can't do an Iron Man with that attitude. Nope. Don't know why you'd want to do an Iron Man, but I tell you what, if you could do an Iron Man and then take that and add it to your to your to your career, to the the, the longevity of your career, you know, because look, it's going to be 5 years from now, 10 years from now, it's going to be 20 years, you're going to look back and say and the marketplace is going to reward whatever you do every day. It's easy to discard, say, 10 terrible ideas and go after the one good idea. But when you start to get a little bit of momentum, uh, you can drown yourself in good opportunities that aren't great opportunities. And if you scatter your focus, you try to do 17 different product lines, you can kill your business really easily, uh, particularly when you have a small team. So I think uh, asking yourself repeatedly, what is the one project, the one initiative, the one campaign that if successful, will render the rest of these things either unnecessary or much, much easier. What is that, what is that one step? And you know, I've called it this lead domino before, but what is the one thing on this list of seven different campaigns that will make all the other ones irrelevant or much easier? How do you, I mean, that's a tough um, answer, isn't it? Because uh, they all sound good. Yeah, I think uh, I, they, they can. And I think that what it comes down to oftentimes is uh, it returns back to measurement. So how are we defining success? Like if we want to grow the company, let's just say, what does that mean? In three months, six months, what are we measuring? Why are we measuring those things? And uh, you know, what is a sort of uh, a, a comfort goal? Meaning like, okay, we think we can easily hit this number. What is a stretch and what is like, oh, hallelujah, we, we threaded sure. the needle. And, and then come up with a, a, a really concrete number to tackle. And once you have that number, then you can look at those five and say, all right, which of those are going to serve us right now? And I'm, I'm dealing with that uh, increasingly so because I have all these different branches of 
content and activities and angel investing and so on, it's very easy for me to get scattered. It's never been easier. So I have to continually ask that type of question. What, what, what's your main focus now? If you had to boil it down to one? My main focus right now is building the podcast, building my podcast, Tim Ferriss Show, up to a point where it's consistently in the top 10 to 15 on iTunes so that I can establish a presence and name recognition in Hollywood and entertainment, which I can leverage then for the TV show and film projects that I'll be expanding into in the next three to nine months. And specifically what that means is targeted advertising um, for the podcast specifically towards people who are producers, agents, actors, directors in Hollywood and New York City. All of that can be quantified. 